Hi all, let's have a look at the second encounter against the very, very dangerous Wasp, which was getting a reputation at this point in the tournament in TCEC uh, round 14 as being the neural network killer because it had beaten Deus Ex twice and Leela once. So would this be four in a row? Uh, and the speed of the Wasp engine, if you observe uh, the live streams, it seems to be one of the fastest, like 40 million nodes per second, <laughs> examining something uh, sometimes orders of magnitude higher than other uh, brute, uh, traditional exhaustive search engines, uh, what it's sometimes called brute force chess engines. Um, so it's much quicker than the others. So let's see what happened in this game. The book moves given. Uh, this is a very good start position, I believe, a very solid start position. <laughs> so the end of the book here. The Slav, often regarded as an upgrade to the Queen's game at decline because the, the c8 bishop is not hemmed in. Black's really holding the center in a classical manner. Knight f3, knight f6. We see e3 from Wasp. And then bishop g4, this is in chess based live book. Quite provocative to, provoke, to get white to kick the bishop, but maybe create some weaknesses. e6, h3, and this, this is what happens here. h3 with bishop h5. Queen b3, queen b6. Now here's c5. This is unusual as far as human. Uh, books are concerned. The main line seems to be knight h4 here to try and guarantee grabbing this bishop. For example here, g4, uh, taking on g6, Fianchetto in the bishop. And this is thought to be a slight edge for white, this position. So c c5 seems a little bit um, committal. Uh, often in super grandmaster level, I believe it's played when the bishop's out of the pawn chain. So already this is this is quite a promising looking position uh, with e, the e5 break maybe later. g4, bishop g6, knight e5, knight bd7. So white does grab the bishop here. You might think, well, it's similar. But uh, this tension release with e5, usually this would weaken white's pawn structure to play e5 and ed. Uh, for example, leaving a weaker pawn on d4. We have b6 trying to undermine like this. Which is awkward with the queen here. There's no, um, so there's no way of really supporting this pawn chain. C takes this activates the black rook. This is an interesting way of taking it. Lena is concerned about the pawns sticking together. Uh, the more tactical knight takes b6 is seems to be a recommendation of of my stockfish engine, and the initial excitement sort of dies down a bit. Actually, here it starts to be equal. But if you look the structurally. Um, this doesn't look as resistant, this pawn structure, as in the game. There, there is um, a problem with this, uh, though, which is exposed. B5, G5 now. Uh, interestingly, the knight didn't go to G8. The knight actually went on the edge uh, with the idea later that E5, ED would get the F4 square. Perhaps that was the intention, not to just leave the knight on the rim for the rest of the game. But it seems as though knight g8 uh, might, you know, from a human point of view, this might seem a little bit safer. For example, this is very bad for white. If white ever castles queenside, then this is a disaster variation. Just quickly show you where, uh, yeah, this is not gonna happen, but it's a disaster variation. Uh, where black's got a big advantage there. And if white's castling kingside, you know, it's a bit dodgy with these, these pawns. Uh, you know, weakened. So, knight, knight g8, yeah, it does seem as though that, that was interesting. But we have knight h5, white castles there, bishop d6, rook fc1, threatening knight takes b5 now. Uh, just to put that on the board, uh, knight takes b5 using the pen, there's no, there's no backfire to that tactic. So, queen b7, uh, we have here a4, very interesting. Uh, tactically here and positioning a5 so this outside pass pawn is it quite dangerous for Lila black castles bishop f1 supporting a6 so it does seem quite dangerous a6 queen a7 blockading for a moment with the queen knight a4 and now finally e5 you can see that either this this pawn is going to be weak on d4 or black's going to get the f4 square for this knight queen d3 we have Bishop b8 here now, which offers the b4 pawn tactically in exchange 
to potentially uh, get the battery to play queen h2. Bishop takes, e takes, and now there's dangers for white. White took with the queen. If taken with the pawn, then this knight actually comes in with a vengeance in the variations. Queen c2, for example, check. And can you see what black could play here? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay, queen takes g2 is possible here for knight f4 check. Black will be winning that. So white took with the queen, and we have queen c7. So, yeah, this this seems as though white's being forced to give the knight at least the g3 square to hop into and hop back into the game. So this knight is not totally stranded now. Bishop a7 first. Um, we have bishop c5, which is interesting. It goes into a self pin. But otherwise, there is a lot of pressure on building up on e3. So white's fending off the pressure. And, and actually here, seems to be being positionally outplayed a bit with this backward pawn from a visual point of view. So b4 is played, knight g3. With the, you know, the prospect of popping into f5 here, very dangerous. Uh, we have rook a3. It seems as though white's in a passive way here, with black able to comfortably, comfortably just double the rooks, potentially. But uh, it's not as easy as that now. Rook C B three. We have Queen B eight. Uh King G two. Now here's a critical moment. It seems um my local engine, Stockfish Nine, the very strongest I have, thinks D four might actually be a way for black to have broken through actually with Rook E one. Uh there's various ideas here, including Queen D six. Uh, to d5, as well as also rook e2 for taking on f4. Just to show some of this, here, queen d6. Uh, this is just dangerous, knight e3 here. Is is interesting. Uh, check. And here, that, that's like winning the exchange. So, what does white actually do here? Rook a b2, check. Knight h4, this, this is dangerous for white. This this line, uh, just to show some of the dangers. Yeah, this this would be absolutely winning for black. So it it does seem as though there's a dangerous breakthrough here. Um, with d4. Uh, so this this position is interesting here with rookie one. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it wasn't played. It it does seem extremely dangerous. We have actually queen d6 being played instead. Uh, queen f2, rook b8, queen d2, rook b e8. I'm shuffling instead, basically. Uh, now king h7, and actually white's allowed there. White plays a dynamic move here to get rid of all the defensive suffering, not waiting for any, again, doubling of rooks and d4 possibility. Uh, white actually plays dynamically with e4 here. Uh, challenging black's best piece basically. Uh, so what's the point? Well the queen's come off and after bishop e2, h4, h5 is spotted along with the rooks not just going defensive but actually attacking on the h file. So all of a sudden there are some dangers here. Uh, knight f5, knight b7. Okay so there's some uh, knight d4, rook b2, f6, h4, e3. That pawn is, is looking a little bit dangerous though. Knight c5, rook b8. So threatening bishop takes c5 here. Knight b7, f5, rook c3, rook e4, rook c1, rook a8, bishop d3, rook e8, e bishop e2, rook e4, bishop d3, rook e6, bishop c4, rook goes back. Yeah, some shuffling here. And the rook's double again here. And yeah, it's like probing from both sides for an issue. For a moment, probing again, probing now. Here, uh, if a7 and just rook a8 actually not take the knight, that should be sufficient, for example, like this. And um, black would be at least fine here with an even position. So we have rook f1. So it seems Leela's doing fine here uh, against the, like one of the strongest 
brute force <laughs> traditional search engines in the tournament the fastest the, the very fastest 43 core I expect fully expect is full 43 core at work as well in a very good way so knight takes here rookie for hitting f4 uh, hg king takes um, Actually, just take you back to this critical moment after h5. This this is starting to get dangerous. This peeling of the h file. If bishop, uh, if if g takes, for example, bishop takes. This is starting to be nasty. So it's good that Leela avoided this possibility. White's got a small edge there. That h file is looking a little bit dangerous. There's this dangerous pawn there. So by letting the king take on g6, I think this was the safest route here. But yeah, this pawn's a bit of a problem. Uh, so just in time, though, Black can escape by taking on g5 here. But first, c5 is thrown thrown on. You know, taking on f4 to take on g5. But c5 is thrown in. Already, Black could have just immediately, Leela could have just immediately taken on f4 and got this position with a perpetual check here, which is a bit similar to actually what happened there. C5 first, uh, and then taking on f4 which gives king g5 now so check and then we have a perpetual check here basically uh, yeah quite a lot of checks and Leela sense of humor throws this in tempting white to maybe take on g3 um, well white does take take on g3 uh, <laughs> um, and maybe tempting white to to play rook g1 but it's not going to happen white just takes the perpetual check here in this position white just takes the perpetual check um after rook g3 yeah the game was agreed drawn uh, by free file repetition now if the game had continued upon me with um with rook g1 uh it seems black can win this position by queening and it's not just enough for white the two pawns over here it seems after say rookie seven here concretely it seems black can uh, you know just get the exchange up and be winning this basically so that was avoided uh, so Leela managed to hold the biggest brute of them all to a draw with the black pieces which is very very good news I was very concerned that wasp was just gonna keep wiping out the neural network engines <laughs> The speed is phenomenal on Wasp. It's so much quicker than the other ones, uh, traditional exhaustive search engines in the tournament. So much quicker. So it, congratulations to the Wasp team or Wasp author to have such a dangerous uh, traditional chess engine. Uh, so all three are, have been fiercely competing now in the top three places to try and get one of those top two promotion places. It's um, a double double round robin. I initially got it wrong actually. I thought it was just like I thought it was towards the end of the tournament, just halfway in fact. So we've got another day or two, a few days actually, uh, of Leela playing, which is good for you guys <laughs> definitely to have some extra videos for Leela playing in this tournament. So it's like Leela has to play uh, four games against each of the opponents. So double double round robin, I believe it's called. Uh, but at this point, Leela is doing well in the tournament. So this this point is the seventh of August, seven a.m. UK time uh, at the moment. So Leela is doing very very well. So this was a game which really concerned me. I thought I should show it, even though I normally don't show draws. But this is a, a bit of a tournament coverage documentary at the moment. Okay, comments, questions, like, shares appreciated. Thanks so much.